Right. Hello, Sleepy. It's a brand new stream, brand new day. This game came out 11 years ago today, which definitely doesn't make me feel old. I'm glad you feel great about walking around, Sleepy. Alright, so we need to get ready for Falconer. So I think our stars for this fight are gonna be Sleepy and Bubger. I think Falconer only has two Pokemon, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, Bubger's pretty good on levels we could do to level her up maybe one or two more times. Sleepy, we need to get up a bit higher. And then we'll probably get Peach and or Ritari up to snuff as well. Uh, as a reserve. But we'll start with getting Sleepy up there. Because Sleepy is pretty safe to grind, I think. We also need to be careful not to go anywhere new by mistake. Move this so I can see. That would be Geodude. Yeah, we didn't get the Geodude last time. That's fine. Oh! The Apricorn hasn't grown back. That's interesting. I guess it has to be in-game time for those, then. That's gonna- oh, that's gonna make the berry pot very challenging to use. I think that's fine, though, because we're limiting berries anyway. So, we already fought this guy. We'll just start some- Hello! Welcome. First encounter of the day. Or night, I should say. Um... Sleepy can take this. No problem. Not very effective, because we're poison-typed. Oh, except it's a crit, so, you know. Four damage, though, we'll still be fine. This is this is an old area. We're, we're just going to be grinding tonight. Not really, not really putting any pressure to make any real progress or anything. I'm just going to get... Um, my team ready for Falconer, basically, while still staying under the level cap. So for now, we're just sticking with places we've been. Okay. I think we discovered last time, definitively, that poison types can't be poisoned in this gen. I believe that's a change that's already been made a thing. So we should be okay to stay in on Weedles. Oh, crit! Nice job, Sleepy! Um, I think we'll still outspeed? Yeah, we will. See ya! This is going to be a chill stream tonight, just hang out and chat while we get some levels. I figured it'd be appropriate to stream today because uh, this game and its counterpart Heart Gold released in North America 11 years ago today. So we're just going to go around and lick everything. That's not going to be very effective. Poison type, one damage, yep. We're good. I wonder what effort values Weedles yield. I would guess attack. Yeah, I feel that. Oh, 
<sighs> but yeah, um, I'm trying to remember when exactly I got this game. I, th I think I got it pretty close to launch. When I played it originally the first time. Blet. It'd be cool if they let you... I, I get why they don't, but I think it'd be funny if they let you nickname moves. Because we are just going to be spending quite a few minutes just blepping things with Sleepy. Maybe we shouldn't be grinding Sleepy on Weedles. Because those, I believe, give attack EVs, and we want Sleepy to get some special attack stuff. So maybe once we get Sleepy a few more levels so it's safe to do so, we'll take her back into the Bellsprout Tower to farm against other Ghastlies. Because I think... I think that will yield special attack EVs, which will be more useful for her. No clue what EVs Bellsprouts yield. And I can't look it up, so that'll just be a wild card. So, I remember playing Red Version pretty well, just because I played it so many times. And I'm surprised that I don't remember this game better, considering it's probably my favorite Pokémon game. It's the one I remember the most fondly, even if I don't remember as much of it as I believed I did. Oh, Rattatas. Those will give speed EVs, I'm pretty sure. Oh, but we can't lick them is a problem. That's fine, we can just switch. Rattata shouldn't be dangerous to switch against yet. It's not like they know Pursuit at this level. So how is everyone else's week? I took a week off of streaming. I'm sure plenty of things have happened in the world, but how are how are people in chat doing? How is everyone's week? Anything interesting happen? Sleepy grew to level 10. Nice, 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 nice. Good to see that special attack go up. Uh, yeah, everyone's still topped off. I'm trying to think if anything interesting happened to me this past week. I am maybe going to get to play in a... a friend of mine's going to be running Dragon Heist, the D&D pre-written adventure. I think we'll try to get Peach some XP here. Which I come- I was shocked to find out that Dragon Heist does not- despite its name, does not have a heist in it. So, a little bit of a dis- I mean, I'm still excited to play it for sure, because finally get out from behind the GM screen. But I can say, when my game, Heart Heist, has the word heist on the tin, there are heists in the game. In fact, it's the entire- it's pretty much the entirety of my game. And I might get a chance to playtest it soon, which is exciting, because a friend of mine- another friend of mine has offered to run. So potentially looking forward to that. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. Well, this one's a bit higher level. I'm trying. To, I'm. I'm like. I'm. I'm like 60% sure that Rattatas give speed effort values, but I'm concerned that, like the Weedles, they actually give attack effort values, which would be unfortunate for us. Especially since both the Pokémon I'm trying to grind right now are special attackers, most likely. Got more Rattatas. I really was hoping to run into more Ghastly in here. This was level 3 though, so we can get Rattari in there. Since we still can't hit normal types with Sleevy. Oh, this might level up Rattari actually. He's pretty close. Nice. 19 to 16, that's 3, yeah. Good job, Ritari. There's the ding. Level 8. The Vasca number. Yeah. Look at that speed stat. I'm really hoping, really hoping, because even, even with, um... Because apparent... Well... Yeah, Rotari has a speed boost from his nature. Yes, because he's hasty, I believe. But even without that, I think his speed would still be his highest stat. Um, so I, I think I'm okay to assume that Rattatas give speed EVs. God, the music in this game is very good. This game, I, I talked about it last time, but the art direction in this game is still very interesting to me. With, with how it's like quasi 3D because like it is 3D models for like the environments but then the characters are the chibi sprites like we talked about um which again like kind of you know why why I think that the chibi designs for the Diamond Pearl remakes like work for that but it's very interesting to see it like on the DS It's also why I was kind of disappointed to see them not really utilize the 3D in um, X and Y in uh, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. I feel like that would have been, I don't know, maybe it would have been headache inducing, but I feel like that would have been pretty cool. Oh well. Each can 2KO these. Four damage about each hit. Good, good, good. Get those speed EVs so we can hit first. Speed is so important in single battles. Keep, I keep jumping the gun, but Sleepy still cannot attack these yet. I'm more tired than I thought I would be today. It's probably the burger I had earlier, maybe. Oh, 
That did more than I thought it would. Rotari's defenses aren't super. 23 to 16, that's 7 damage? So we can only really take one more hit before we're risking being in crit range. But I think I think we'll lead with one anyway and swap out if it becomes a problem. Tail whip. Oh. 16 to 10, that's 6. Yeah, we're in crit range now. Well, actually, we, we have priority, so this will finish it. So we don't actually have to switch. But if we didn't have priority there, we would have had to switch because we couldn't risk the... You know who did everything right with the whole retro thing? Shovel Knight, yes! Shovel Knight's art style is so good! And the animation is nice. The bouncing is really satisfying. It's like you... And like, you can see the sort of homage to um the DuckTales game with like the bouncing on the pogo stick. Or, or on this case the... Or not pogo stick, bouncing on the cane. Or in this case the shovel. But like it's not too heavy handed. It's like it's there, so you can kind of see it and appreciate it, but it's not like he's a duck man. Not that that would have been a bad thing. I still would have played Duck Knight, D Duck Shovel Knight. Oh yeah, the the music is great in that game as well. Really, just captures the feeling of that era of games, but with like. But, like, you know, it, it, it still makes use of, like, modern technology to, like, deliver on it in a way that, like, they couldn't have back then. Because it does such a good job of, like, evoking the feeling of... It, 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 the, it evokes how you remember those games being, right? Because it is better in terms of, like, what it can do within the technical limitations and all that and the stuff that they did with it. You know, some things that they do in Shovel Knight they never could have done in, in games of that time period. But they got, like, the feeling of playing games from that era just perfect. Uh, let's go with Peach. Mm-hmm. That reminds me that I still need to finish Shovel Knight. I'm like right at the end, which is a problem because it's been so long that I've definitely forgotten how to play it. So I'm gonna hop back in and be like at the most difficult part of the game whilst trying to relearn how to play it. But you know this because uh, you're who I was playing it with, Lark. I was doing the co-op. But that was like... God, that was before quarantine, even. It's been such a long time since we played Shovel Knight. Um, I actually am not sure why I decided to run back to the Pokémon Center there. I did not need to. I've never played um, any of the like original versions of the third gen games, and I kind of want to check them out just to like experience them because I, I I'd be interested to see just like more like like feel more like how drastic or not drastic a change it was between the art styles of the third gen games and. 4th gen, fourth gen games like this one here. Because the... Like I was saying about this, like the, the, the direction they took this like quasi-3D environments is so like visually interesting to me. Because let me... Third gen games... Ruby, Sapphire, those would have 
been on, like, the Game Boy Advance still, right? Or, like, the Game Boy SP, which is basically an Advance, but, like, a flip phone. I feel like it's a pretty considerable jump. Like, visual-wise. Because, like, gold and silver, like, the original ones were bare, like, barely visually better than the original, like, red, blue, green, from what I remember. Um, I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember what the third gen games looked like. It's hard because I never played any of them, the original ones. I, I played the remakes, I played, um, Alpha Sapphire. I'm looking at the case on my shelf right now. Uh, we'll start with Peach and see how that goes. I don't think she's in crit range. Yeah. 19 to 16, that's 3. Yeah, we'll be fine. Nice one, Peach. That wasn't even a crit. Sixteen to ten. Oh, okay. Now we're in crit range, but I think this is gonna wrap it up, so we'll be fine. Yeah, emerald. Yeah, if I if I were to go back and get one, I'd definitely get emerald because that's just like categorically better, you know. Peach is a little. Peach needs some little. Peach needs some peach juice, so we're gonna take her back to the Pokemon Center. Please heal my strange ball of gas. And my Tanuki princess. Thank you. So in, in this anime world, that is the Pokemon world, Peach's hair is probably... Or not Peach, gosh. Um... Nurse Joy's hair is probably, like, naturally pink, right? Uh... Or... Is it... Like... Because, you know, like anime characters, they have, they have funny colored hair all the time. But where I'm going with this is, I think Nurse Joy's hair is just that color. But James... I'm suspicious of. Because... On at least, I think, two occasions in the anime, he will correct people when they comment on the co color of his hair. And that sounds like something that someone who dyes his hair a specific color would say. I don't know. Maybe. I still have my Game Boy Advance, so like I could just buy a cartridge. Bubka's so strong, she can one-shot the Rattatas. Look at her go. Coral Brulu number 42. <laughs> yeah, um, my, my, my Game Boy Advance was the, um... Like the plain, like, silvery one. And man, that, like, gosh, Game Boy Advance, those were the day, and like prior to that too with the regular Game Boy, those were the days of like just, just hundreds of peripheral project products, like both official and not official. Because there were so many, like, people trying to get in on the Game Boy craze. That was four damage. I need to keep track of this. So like, ev like all these companies were just churning out peripherals for Nintendo products. Um, but like, you know, they couldn't always say that they were peripherals for Nintendo products. But I remember having this like, 
It was like a combination light and magnifying glass that would like clip onto the top and could fold back down onto it for like fitting it in your pocket. Um, because you know the the Game Boy Advance you know didn't have a backlight, so if it was dark, you had to like shine a light on it to see. Um, and then the screen, you know, screens were smaller back then too. So it was like a magnifying glass that would be held up by like a fold-out arm to hold the magnifying glass a few inches above the screen so it would just magnify it for you. And then the casing for the magnifying glass had lights that you could turn on and off. I remember having one of those for my Game Boy Advance. Physical of Emerald still, but I used to have a transparent pink one, but it's gone. I just have the purple-blue transparent one that was technically my brother's. Yeah, that's another thing I miss. The transparent console casing. Those were the days. They need to bring that back. I think we're good to keep going for a bit. I know there's tons of people out there who, like, modify their consoles and stuff. Um, which for some reason... Like, I, I don't get why Nintendo like, hates when people make, like, custom shells and stuff for their products. It's like, it's my controller! I'll put whatever I want on it! I'll put whatever stickers or whatever the heck I want on it. I bought it, it's a physical thing that belongs to me. It's like, I guess it's a little bit different when you're, like, selling them. I guess. But like, I feel like at that point, like you're you're more so like you're still paying for the price of the controller, but then you're also like, oh, nice job, Peach, critical hit. Like at that point, because you're also paying for a service, right, of uh, having someone uh, modify a controller for you, because that's something that like anyone can do if they just like take the time to learn and have the resources, right? But not everyone has the time and resources to do that. And it's not like it's like negatively impacting Nintendo's brand or anything like that. It's like, oh, some kid in New Jersey paid a guy to like modify his Switch Joy-Cons to be maroon uh, with like LEDs in it. I don't know. Bombed the new Mario Switch. We didn't deserve the garbage they released. What happened with the with the new Mario Switch? I'm not, I, I I'm not uh, up to speed on that. What happened with the new Mario Switch? Was it just like unappealing in design, or like was there something wrong with it? I have um, not the Switch, but I, I got uh, when I got my Wii U, I got the Mario Kart bundle. So it came with, um, you know, those like those like steering wheel uh, peripherals, not peripherals, but like the steering wheel that you could slot the Wii remote into. Um, I got one of those. It's like Mario colored, and it's pretty nice. I've never actually used it because I never really used that to play Mario Kart anyway. Um, but more, yeah, like more interestingly, I got the um, the uh, Super Mario Wii Remote Plus that came with it. And I feel like that had a pretty solid design. The 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 Mario Wii modes, just in general, tended to have nice designs. I thought. But yeah, what was wrong with the um, what was wrong with the Super Mario Switch? I don't remember what it looks like. It's literally all red, and that's it. Like it's the cool part. Of it, the Animal Crossing one had decal on the dock, two different colored controllers. It's just red? Like, there's not even, like, an M on it anywhere? Yeah, that's really underwhelming, what? You'd think they'd, think they'd do more for one of their flagship IPs. That's, that's really underwhelming. And isn't it also, um... Isn't it also, like, we're, we're, we're how many years into the, uh into the Switch's life cycle, and there's still only a light and dark theme for the, uh... for, like, the menu. 
They never released any more themes. Because I remember the 3DS has, like, tons of themes. And, like, you'd get... I think you would get one with every game that you got. And then there were a bunch more that you could buy on, like, the the, the eShop or whatever. Yeah, at least an M. Like, come on. Oh, the dock looking like overalls would have been amazing. You're so right. Your brain is bigger than Nintendo's. They should let Lark design their consoles. At least, like, the, the casing. What would your dream console casing look like for, like, whichever console you play the most? God, I'd, I'd have to think about that one. Let's see. Because I, I, I co-own a Switch, but I haven't had my turn with it yet. Um, I need to... F I'm trying to kick myself into finishing Wind Waker, because I still haven't finished Wind Waker. Uh, but once I finish Wind Waker, I am, I am going out and I am buying Breath of the Wild, and you won't see me for a few weeks. Uh, but until then, um, I've mostly just been playing... Uh, Wind Waker HD on the Wii U. It's like technically the attachments for the controllers are blue, so it evokes Mario's colors, but like the release switch had a blue and red controller. Like, do y yeah, you're right. They could have done so much better. And it's Mario! Like, again flagship IP, you'd think they'd put a little bit more effort into it. You know? Put a little more pizzazz on that thing. Dream console casing. I'm gonna- I'm gonna think of it in this- in terms of the Switch. I haven't looked at enough of the alternative casings for the Switch. Because I know there's, like, I think there's a couple Zelda ones by now, actually, unless I'm thinking of some fan-made ones. But unless I'm remembering wrong, there's, like, more than one Zelda version of the Switch that's been released. And I know we're getting those new Joy-Cons for the remake of um, Skyward Sword, which I'm actually- okay! Just quick aside, I'm I'm happy that Skyward Sword is getting ported to the Switch, because I liked Skyward Sword. I don't care what anyone says. And I think the Joy-Cons look neat. I'm not going to get them, but I think they look nice. See, that, like, that's, like, the, lo the amount of detail that the Skyward Sword Joy-Cons got the Mario ones should have gotten to. Because, like, the Skyward Sword ones are cool because, like, the the right one, like, evokes the Master Sword and the left one evokes the shield. Like, it's genius. Like, it's so simple, but, like, so effective. And it doesn't even, like, it doesn't even, like, I, I don't know if the, um, Skyward Sword Switch has, uh, like, decals or, like, engravings or anything in it, because some of them are, like, engraved, which is, like, really extra, like, etched. Um, but a lot of these, it's, like, it's just a paint job, right? You don't even need to, like, design new casing. It's just different paint jobs on the casing you already got, right? Like, maybe there's just something to, like, doing more paint jobs on the exact same case that I'm not aware of, but, like, I feel like they could have done so much better on the Mario ones at, like, very little effort. Let's get Ritari in there. I 
that was four. And Rotari's defenses concern me. Because he always seems to take a little bit more damage than I think he will, sometimes. and 16. Lots of rats in this tower. Rats! Rats! They're the rats! They drink at night. They stalk at night. They're the rats! Um, Let's get Peach in here. Fence fell. Twenty five to twenty one. That's four. Even with the defense drop, Peach Peach be thick though. And she gets those crits. Unlike Ritari, I'm never worried about Peach's defenses. Like, with the Mario Switch, everything all red with the blue attachments even would have been more improved with, like, a Mario decal in the dock. Like, even just that would have been like, oh yeah, I have the Mario Switch. Yeah! And, and like, I'm kind of... Like, kind of like I what I was saying, like, they didn't even need to go that far, right? Like, uh, well, I mean, decal is basically... Um, another paint job. But, like, they, they, like some, some of these Switches have, like have, like, custom casing, where there's, like, embossed parts, or, like, etched parts. But they didn't, need, like, they don't even need to go that far. Just literally paint an M on the side. Right? And it would have been better than what we got. Stencil it, even. See, what what would my ideal casing for the Nintendo Switch be? I feel like the Switch is a difficult one because the the Switch itself is mostly screen. So there's not like much surface area left to like uh to customize. Um and then that leaves the Joy-Cons, which are some of like as as much as I like the Switch, the Joy-Cons I'm still not entirely used to wielding them, like, off of it. Uh, like, not attached to the main body, because they're so dinky. Like, I'm still not entirely used to that. Yeah, I'd rather there have been something on the actual Switch too, but yeah, I think they tried to patch it up with a matching case, but boo. Yeah, cases could sort of fix it. Um... Yeah, the Switch doesn't- the Switch itself, with and without the Joy-Cons, doesn't have a whole lot of surface area, so you, you've got, like, very limited window to pack as much charm into it as you can. The dock... The, I, I'm back and forth on the dock, because, like, some of the docks- some of the custom docks look really cool, but, like, it's the dock. You know, you leave it at home most of the time. It's- I don't- I'm not entirely certain... I mean, I guess if you play it mostly at home, then, uh, then it, I could see it being envisioned as part of the console more if you're playing it, like, in docked mode a lot more. I, I guess in that case, then yeah, the, the, the charging dock counts as part of the console. So, maybe there could be some, like, interaction there. Let's get, let's, let me, trying to get creative with, like, well, like, what could I do with the casing to make docking versus undocking the switch interesting? If I remember the, if I remember right, the dock is slightly thicker on one side, and then the thinner side is usually where, like, the cool decals and stuff go, because there's less like mechanical, like, electronics on that side of it. Hmm. 
Maybe like... Because I'm trying to think, like, maybe it'd be cool if, like, the entire Switch evoked the Master Sword, and then, like, the dock was, like, the pedestal that the Master Sword rests in. But I don't know if the shape would of that whole s system would lend itself to that design or not. I'm just trying to think of stuff, stuff like that. Also, the controllers, I usually have the extended wrist attachments when I have them off the Switch. It bulks it up, but I also hate the feel of that part, the clips, into the Switch in my hands. Yeah! That is another thing, I forgot about those little clippy doodads. For like the bumpers when you have it unconnected. See how Ratari does here. He's only a few levels higher than this wild. 23 to 14. That's 9 damage? Wait, no, 6 and. Yeah, 9 damage. So we're actually in crit range right now. But we'll, we will still win with a quick attack. Man, Ratari's defense is not great. No, yeah, I appreciate your presence in chat, Lark, always. It's a lot easier to talk through an entire stream of just grinding when I have chat to bounce topic off of. I appreciate you. Um, do I need to run back and heal? No, it's just Ritari. Everyone else has got plenty in the tank. See, what other whatever whatever clever clever what other clever things could they do with the casing on the switch like what if um what if the dock was mostly transparent and you do something with that right like what if there was something like on the switch and then when you dock it into the mostly transparent dock casing like there was some interaction there that could be cool I didn't even talk about when we were talking about skins, how I still have my purple GameCube with a melee skin on it, which is honestly kind of epic. But it's also a little bit crooked if I remember because I was like A when I put it on. Yeah! S skins are like the... the uh, cheaper version of releasing like new hardware casing and stuff. And also, yeah, you run the risk of putting them on crooked. I feel like, I don't know, are skins, like, less popular among collectors? I've never really talked to a lot of people who collect, like, consoles and stuff. Because I feel like they don't, like, decals they'll still do and stickers, but, like, I feel like the amount of, like, skins and stuff has gone down with, like, recent generations of consoles and such. Peach's defense is 12, we get to 9. So now for the Switch, though, they have... Hard snap-on skin. Oh, that sounds a lot better, actually. Actually, I had one of those for my 3DS. Um, granted, when I, I got it used, and it was all, like, scratched up, but it was, um, it was for, uh, Ocarina of Time for the 3DS. Um, I had, like, one of those snap-on cases to go around the 3DS, which, while it looked very cool, even though it was incredibly scratched up when I got it, um, made it so much bulkier, right? Which would have been fine if it was, like, an at-home device, but because it's a 3DS, you know, it's meant to be portable. So the the clunkiness of it made me end up taking the thing off for most of the time. In fact, I'm looking at it on my on my desk right now and still doesn't have the case on it.
But that is also an option, which I feel like might be more popular among collectors than than the stick-on ones, because the stick-on ones are kind of permanent, you know? Like, I, I feel like um, the removable, like, snap-on skins are a lot more collectible because you can, like, pop them on and off and mix and match and stuff like that. I'm still trying to think of... There, there's got to be something cool we can do with the idea of having the dock for the Switch have, like, transparent casing that interacts with the design on the Switch itself in some way. I feel like there's some cool design idea there that I just haven't thought of yet. Oh, I'd say honestly the skin appeal thing went up for the Switch, but maybe it's the people I follow where I see a lot of custom ones, probably also because they have snap-on hard ones you can remove. Probably. Because that's, that's the other thing. There's so... Like I was kind of saying earlier, like there's lots of people who modify and make custom- oh my gosh, just one level and Peach is doing so much more damage to these Rattatas, although this one is only level 3. Oh, I want to show everyone who's- how many people are even here? Oh, we got five people, wow. Um. I was looking at the Flash TM earlier. Uh, remember what I was a few streams ago when I was wondering if we were just going to be wandering around in the dark? We totally are because none of my Pokemon can learn Flash. Bubger isn't even an option. <laughs> oh no. So yeah, we are just going to be wandering around in the dark at some point. At, le at least two points in this game because there's the dark cave and there's Mount Moon. Uh, I don't remember if... I'm trying to remember if the cave where like Mewtwo is in Kanto also needs to be lit up with Flash. I don't think it does. I think that one is just lit up for some reason. Because some of the caves aren't dark. Which seems strange now that I think about it. It seems like a weird inconsistency. The other thing, which I haven't really seen for controllers until now, is that they have silicone snap-on things for the Joy-Con joysticks, which makes customizations even more appealing. Oh yeah, like the little, like, nubby things for, like, the actual top of the... the joysticks. I've never used one of those, and I'm kind of... I don't know. I I'd have to try those out, because I, I worry about, like, how those would feel, like, moving on the controller. I feel like if they're snug enough, it would be cool, but I've never tried them, so I don't know. Mm. But yeah, that is another level of customization. I feel like, as far as collecting goes, that like the snap-on stuff is much more collector-friendly, because it also means you don't need to buy more than one console, right? You can just collect casings for your one console and, like, customize it on the fly. You can just info dump about things I'm interested in at the moment while you grind. That That's a good idea! We should do We could do that at some point. I don't know how we'd make it work, but we'll make it- we'll find a way to make it work. Because I know, um... Because we have tried live streaming with you on Discord in the past, but the problem would be it would make a feedback loop, uh, and I had never figured out how to fix that. There's definitely a way, I just need to learn it. Yeah, I do have, um, what's it called, the alert box plugin now from Streamlabs on here, but I turned off the sounds from the alerts. Um, I don't know if we'll get any tonight. Uh, but uh, I turned off the sounds because just like I'm uh, afraid would happen with um, recording over Discord. Because I can hear the alerts myself also. And I'm afraid that the way I've set the capture up would end up recording the... Uh, 
would end up recording the alert box sounds, which would make another feedback loop. Mage might be able to help, since I'm pretty sure she sent people on these. Yeah, I know she has. I wanted. I need to learn how she does that. It's a good thing I'm not a professional streamer because I'd be terrible at it. <laughs> Mage knows what she's doing. And that's why she's a pro and I'm not. Let's go, Peach. Tail Whip won't save you now, Rattata. If only they let us have enough characters uh, in the Pokemon names where we could have nicknamed our Rattata the giant rat who makes all of the rules. <laughs> that's okay, that could be Rattari's like title. Rattari's his nickname, but the giant rat who makes all the rules will be Rattari's title. Here he comes now. I'm the giant rat who makes all of the rules. 23 to... Okay, so 3 damage. We're starting to finally get some defense against these wild Rattatas. Certainly dealing enough damage to them. I'm hoping that when Rattari eventually evolves, he'll be a bit less of a glass cannon. Get ready, I'm gonna be on stream and I'm gonna talk about games nobody cares about. It'll be great. Isn't that why people tune into these streams? You know a game that nobody cares about uh, that I played? I'm gonna pull out the case right now so I can look at it and try to spark my memory as much as I can. But uh, one, I think it was for Christmas one year, I got uh, the Nintendo DS Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire game by EA. Uh, it's not a good game. <laughs> You, like, sort of play through... I, you, it's not even accurate to say that you play through the events of the movie, because, like, you honestly don't really. Like, the the levels that you go through... Like, like they're, they're semi-related to the movie, and it, like, implies that you're going through the plot of the movie, but you're really not. They just kind of find excuses to put you in places... And then a video game happens. It's a weird game. I just got distracted because right next to the box for Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, I found the little um what's it called? You know how you know how in the old days games always came with uh Why am I forgetting the word? The little booklets that used to come with every game, right? Um, like, nowadays you have to buy, like, you know, 60-page, like, like, strategy guides. But back in the day, pretty much every game came with, like, a little booklet that was just, like, how to play the game. Um, especially since... And, like, there's, there's lots of reasons for that. I mean, back in the early days of video games, like, game design... Like, video game design was still new, and game designers didn't yet understand, like, a lot of the techniques that we've figured out, you know, in our modern day of, like, um, how to communicate to a player, like, how, how to play a game. Um, and I don't even just mean tutorials, like, so many games just have really good, um, I'm trying to remember the game design word that's not coming to me. But, like, there, there's lots of video games now that are so well designed that it's easy to, like, intuit, like, what you're supposed to do. Um, and way back in the early days, for a lot of games, that was very much not the case. You could be looking at the screen and just have no idea what's going on, so pretty much every game came with a little booklet that would explain to you, like, how you're supposed to play the game. And I kind of miss them. Um, not not that I think games still need, like, that layer of, like, oh, here's how to play the game in case you don't understand, but, like, a lot of them would have, like, story stuff in them, too, and, like, concept art, um, 
And it was just nice to have, like, this physical thing where you could flip through it and, like, maybe get some tips or cool, like, background about, like, how the game was made or, like, uh, like, advanced tips for, like, uh, like, when you're really, like, deep diving into a game and, like, want to, want to learn, like, advanced strategies or stuff like that. Because it's a level of accessibility that, like, wasn't... I feel like something is lost throwing it entirely away, you know? Because, like, how popular are strategy guides for games, you know? Like, do those even sell particularly well? I remember I had an old PC Harry Potter game a long, long time ago. And to do spells, you had to trace patterns accurately, and yeah, I never beat that game. I had a lot of... I think I had three or four of the Harry Potter games on PC. And some of them were a lot better than others. <laughs> I think... I, I, I can't really remember off the top of my head um, exactly what the differences were in their gameplay, but I do remember, I think, Chamber of Secrets was my favorite one out of the ones that I played. Um, and I remember being frustrated where, like, the casting system would be, like, more fun in one, and then the next one would be, like, less fun. But I also, and I didn't learn this until years later when I was, like, watching a video on, like, Tumblr, probably, or something, but, like, those, those games were also on consoles, right? Like, there's, like, PlayStation versions of those games, um, which for some reason even though they're in theory the same game, look and play entirely differently. Which I feel like is another thing that happened a lot more back in like the older days of video games, where like ports of games between systems and between consoles would like behave like so dramatically differently depending on the game. It might not be in the interest of capitalism, but maybe the cool strategy guide things might be more accessible if they also kept it online as well, just thoughts. Maybe the game itself, once you purchased it, could unlock the guide too, maybe. I know the Nintendo, um, what's it called? The Virtual Console does that, where like, um, if you get games on the Virtual Console, you get like a digital version of the old, uh, little booklets. But I wish more like modern games, like out the gate, had them because like even like just having like those little like lore snippets and things like that like it's such like a I don't know I feel like it only adds to the experience and help makes the game more accessible and a lot of them I mean some of them were really crappy but like flipping through this Pokemon one right now for my copy of Pokemon Red version they just ooze charm you know and it'd be such like and especially, like, when you're, like, it, it, it helps, f like, people who already like your game get other people into your game, right? Because that's always a fraction of, like, your advertising is, like, people you've already got into your product, like, getting their friends, like, convincing their friends to also get on it with you. Like, having that booklet that just oozes charm, like is a much easier way for like an older sibling to be like, oh, little bro, check out this game. Look at this booklet, it's so cool. This is how it works. Um, Cause some games, and obviously not all games, some games like are, are easy to look at to where, you know, in this hypothetical scenario, someone looks and goes, oh, I want to play that. But other games like strategy games, um, and like 4x games and things like that like sometimes those are harder to get into from like watching them even if they're really fun games um while a booklet is an opportunity to like you know help get someone into that game much more easily so this is someone who agrees with you about the booklet, but also now they kind of show you backstory and maps and stuff through, like, loading screens and optional books within the game sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. 
like like I said, like video games as as a video games as a as a business have gotten better at like conveying how games are supposed to be played to viewers. Because that, like I said, that's one reason that the booklets kind of went away. Um, but there's still, I feel, an opportunity, you know, to go that extra mile and like help people get into your game. I don't know if it's worth. I don't know if it's worth teaching Sleepy Curse. Probably not, right? Especially since this is a Nuzlocke. Because since she's a ghost type, what it'll do is it'll half her current hit points. Is it current or total? It doesn't matter. It'll half her hit points, and in exchange, whatever target she curses will lose a quarter of its HP every turn. But because this is a Nuzlocke, I'm not confident that that is a sound strategy given taking her to half HP might mean she then gets one shot and faints before I can switch her out. Especially since Pursu Pursuit now exists. I think we're gonna pass up on Curse. Although... Nah, we'll keep Spite. Yeah, we'll, we'll get rid of Curse. I don't think we're gonna learn Curse. What level is Sleepy at? Sleepy is getting there. I want to get Sleepy at least to 13, and then Bubger to like 14 or 15. Um, and get Ratari and Peach to maybe 10 or 11 each, just as backups. Because I, I, I do still think that um, Sleepy and Bubger are going to be the real stars of the show in this Falconer battle. Um, something else that I've talked about, not on stream, which is why I'm bringing it up now. Um, I think it'd be really cool to have a game that, like, includes the booklet as part of the gameplay. The only game, like, modern game that I can think of that does that is Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, where that's, like, the entire game is, like, you know, you have half... Like, everyone has this booklet, and then one person has on the VR headset and has to defuse the bomb while people, like, tell them how using just the booklet. Um, but I feel like there's more cool ways that they could potentially, like, integrate something like that into a modern game and have it be really cool. It's just an aspect of game design that I feel like hasn't been utilized very much in modern games. And I feel like there's lots of space for creativity there. Um, let's get Ratari up. Ratari's trailing behind. That was 17 to 13? I wasn't paying enough attention. We're still gonna take it out with this quick attack, but I, I want to keep a bead on how much damage Ratari is taking. I feel like this is why Ratari is lagging behind, because he takes almost half damage. Almost half health every time he gets into encounter, even with a level 3 of his contemporaries. Contemporaries? No. Sorry, I'm in art history mode now, thinking about game design. Um, <laughs> of his brethren. <laughs> So I'm not confident in sending him out after he's taken just one fight. Like, Peach Peach has the thickness to survive, like, two or three encounters. But Ratari maybe only has one in him before it's getting risky. Gonna probably have stream open, but I personally gotta cook some dinner so I will not be spamming your chat for a bit. That's fine, go get your dinner. I also need everyone to behave. <laughs> everyone be good. Don't disappoint Lark.
Okay, I'll be good, I guess. It's an adult stream, I can say bad words if I want. We'll try- we'll try Ritari here. It's only level 3. We're gonna put some faith in Ritari and see what happens. 13 to 7? That's... 6 damage? So we're already in crit range. So never mind, we will not fight with Ritari. See, this is what I'm saying, right? Swear for- no swearing in Pokémon. Going now, swear. That's fair. For those in the audience who don't know, I run a Pokemon tabletop game uh, using a system that I cannot in good conscience recommend, um, but we've been having fun with it anyway. Uh, and I, <laughs> I've always told my players that there's no swearing in Pokemon, so I guess I'll have to abide by that since it is my own platitude that I have been forced on my players for over two years now. When you put it that way... Fiddlesticks. <sighs> Alright. There's gonna be some water chugging sounds. Thirsty. Stay hydrated, everybody. It's very important for your health. See, I've been I've been a good boy while Lark is gone. I'm hydrating myself, giving giving good health tips to the kids. Oh, actually, now that I have some, now that there are actually people here, here's a question: uh, Are the closed captions working? I th I I I installed uh, the the Twitch plugin thingamajig for closed captions because um, I would like this space to be accessible. Um. As, as as accessible as I can, um, but I don't know if they work. Uh, is anyone able to confirm if the captions are actually working, or have I set them up incorrectly? I have to wait a bit for the stream to catch up. I've increased the chat delay because um, I, I decided that um, because I, I like like I mentioned earlier when we we're talking about my friend Mage's stream. Mage, unlike me, is like a professional streamer uh, who's very good at what she does. Um, this for me is more just like something that I'm doing for just myself that I wanted to share. Um, and, uh, I, because of that, uh, I realized that, um, making, like, the highlight videos is a lot more time and effort than I, like, envisioned going into this. Um, so I think from this point onward, I'm just gonna be uploading full VODs to YouTube, um, and not, uh, doing the edits, like, the edited highlight clips anymore. Um, and because of that, I decided to, um, beef up my mod support a little bit more to moderate the chat, since it does show up on screen. So the less I have to edit that, the better. In post. I think we got this with another quick attack. But yeah, see what I mean? Ritari just takes so much damage. His defenses just leave much to be desired.
I feel like I explained that very poorly, because I was also thinking about how much damage Rotari is taking. We need to get at least one other attacking move on Sleepy, because otherwise she might not be able to hit anything that Falconer throws at us. Because, like, all of... A lot of the early game flying types are also normal typed. So we at least need to get Sleepy, like, a poison type move or something that she can hit stuff with. Or else she'll just be a hypnosis machine. Which I guess wouldn't be bad. Nice crit, Bubger. I don't know... We just learned Curse, so it's gonna be like three to five levels or something like that before she learns another one. Hopefully closer to three, because we do have a level cap of 18 for Falconer, which I don't want to get all the way to, because that's risky. I don't want someone to level up mid-battle and become unusable. How many Rattatas got nicknamed Ratatouille after that movie came out? Or even Remy. Do people remember that the rat's name is Remy? I, I, everyone calls him Ratatouille as a joke, but do people even remember anymore that the rat's name is Remy? And then his brother's name was Emil, I think? And then there was Linguini. I was about to say Luigi, but I remembered that is incorrect. Um... Oh, what was the food critic's name in that movie? And I want to say that the, that, the, that the little man head chef was like... Oh, what was his name? I don't remember any of the other characters' names. It's been a long time since I saw Ratatouille. I think Peach has got one more in her unless she gets crit. Tail whip, perfect. Ah, oh, she's getting close to one tapping them. Four damage. But not quite. Rattata. All right, Bubger, you're up. Easy peasy. Okay, maybe if like I I'm going back to the to the dream casing, hardware casing for a Nintendo Switch. I'm still trying to think of a cool idea involving making the dock transparent. Maybe like I guess it depends on what game you'd be doing it for. I think I'm approaching this from the wrong angle, yeah. I want to do something for Zelda, but like I said, I haven't played Breath of the Wild yet. 
No spoilers, please. What could you do for Mario? Ooh, what if, like, what if, like, on the back of the Switch, it was a picture of Mario, um, with, like, his arm raised, but then when you slot him into the, to the dock, um, the dock had, like, an orange, like, LED in it, to where when you slot it in, the dock is, like, um, a fireball coming out of his hand, and you kind of get that, like, depth, you know, that, like, false field, like, depth of field, to where it looks like the fireball is shooting out of his hand. That could be cool. And then if you really wanted to be extra, I don't know if this is possible to do on a uh, on the Switch, but like if you slot the Switch while it's turned on into the Super Mario specific dock, it would make like the entering a pipe noise. That could be cool. Oh, that's an idea, actually. Again, playing off the idea of a transparent, um, or at least partially transparent Switch dock casing. What if, um, the back of the Switch, uh, looks like Mario in the overworld, but then you slot it into the dock, it makes the entering the pipe sound, and, and now, like, the overlay inside of the, um, semi-transparent, uh, or partially transparent, I should say, um, dock casing makes it look like now he's in the underground. That could be cool. What other games do people... I, I mean, Mario and Zelda already have custom Switch uh, hardware casings. What are some games that don't have casings yet that people feel like or wish had uh, casings? Like custom Switches. What are some unappreciated games that didn't get their own custom Switches that people would want to see? I know Animal Crossing got one. I know Splatoon has, I think, more than one. Oh! Snipper Clips! Obvious answer! I, it, uh, d going back to the transparent uh, dock idea again. Um, what if what if on the Switch itself there's one of the Snipper Clip characters, and then when you slot it into the to the dock, it overlaps with the other one, and it makes, like, the, the little snip sound. That could be cute. And then the, the Joy-Cons would just be the colors of the two different snipper clips, uh, shapes. They're, like, pink and yellow? Like a greenish yellow? I'm colorblind, I don't know. But the two colors of the snipper clips characters. That would be a cute Switch case. Although I don't know if Snipper Clips is still, like, popular, or if it ever was, like, super popular. It was a cute game, though. I like Snipper Clips. What are some other ones? Hmm. Uh, Switch games that did not get their own Switch custom hardware casing. Uh, I'm trying to think of games that were specifically for the Switch. God, could you imagine 
Y you remember how, like, the Wii remotes had, like, a million peripherals? Again, get kind of going back to, like, the days when there were a million peripherals, like, both licensed and unlicensed for gaming products. Um, which might still be a thing. I think it actually is, but just not in, like, the same way. But, like, remember how, um, the Wii remotes had all these different peripherals you could get to, like, turn it into a golf club, or turn it into a steering wheel, or turn it into a laser gun, or, um, for Guitar Hero, you'd actually put the Wii remote inside of the guitar, which was pretty cool, actually. Um, uh, imagine if they still did that with the Joy-Cons. Do they do that with the Joy-Cons? I haven't seen any... I personally haven't really seen anything like that, but imagine if there were just as many of those, like, oh, turn your Joy-Con into a tennis racket, uh, hardware, uh, what's the word I just said, like, three times a second ago? Peripherals. Alright. Um let's get Ritari in there again. I want I wanna get Ritari to a point where he can actually take more than one encounter before he needs to tap out. Twenty-three to seventeen, that's still six. So that is after a tail whip. Are these lights? I think the lights are just a texture, they don't actually come off the wall. Oh, finally! A ghastly! When was the last time we fought one of these? These are like the whole reason we're even in here. Thank goodness. Okay. There we go. There we go. Ah, so close. didn't even hit me. It's very fortunate for us. It's one less trip to the Pokemon Center. Blit. Oh, so close. 31 to 25, that's 6. So we're not in crit range. Not even close anymore, so that's good. We can actually take on our brethren. That'll be a ding. Yes! Okay. Sleepy still doesn't have a new move. But I'm gonna bring Bubger out for a bit anyway. Cause I I've always been one of those trainers where I always want my starter to be my highest level Pokemon. Um I don't know, it's just it's it's always been a thing for me. I feel like if my starter is not my highest level Pokemon, then something's gone wrong. At least until I've like beaten the game and start like playing to build competitive teams. But this is a Nuzlocke, so that's not gonna happen. There we go. 14 for Bubger. Special attack. Yes! <gasps> oh! Oh! Yo! It's happening! Look at she go!
Bubger evolved into Quilava. She's a long Bubger now. Is that called like a a sub, like a subway, uh, or a, a, a club? One of those various words for long sandwiches. Look at her. She's big. She's an angsty teenager now. Bubger is concerned about the swaying pillar. Don't worry, it's sturdy. I forgot that a lot in a lot of generations, the starters don't all evolve at the same level, and some of them evolve sooner than others. And I think the fire ones... I could be remembering this totally wrong, but I think the fire ones do evolve sooner. T sometimes, depending on the generation. Because it's usually like 15, but then it might be like 14 or 16, depending on the starter and the generation and their type. I wish I'd taken a peek at her stats, like a closer look at her stats earlier. I could compare just exactly how much they've gone up. Okay, but yeah, Bubger's definitely ready for Falconer now. We just need to get Sleepy... We need to get Sleepy ready and get Peach and Ratari up to 10 at least. All right, Sleepy, you got this. Blep. And we one shot now. This is gonna go a little bit faster now. See, now we're getting tons of ghastlies. It's because we just went past 8 o'clock? Critical hit! Sleepy is getting pumped up. Before we were getting so many Rotatas, and now the Ghastlies are just out in force. This is fantastic! Oh, thank you for hosting! Oftwong Wielder, also known as Spitblaze on other platforms. I'm never sure how to pronounce that. If I pronounce it incorrectly, feel free to, uh, correct me. Oft-woog. Oft-woog, okay. I've never said it this way out loud, but I don't think you would like the way that my brain always reads it, like when I read it too fast. That's how I've always pronounced it anyway. Is that a reference to something, or is it like... I, I, I've always wondered. I mean, if I remember... if... As far as I know, it's a nonsense word from a CAPTCHA I got once. Oh, okay! That's an origin story. Look at these wavy letters! Is it an E? Or is it a 3? Kids still remember John Mulaney, right? Uh, let's go top off. Ratari and Peach could both use them. Yeah, whenever I read that username too quickly um and i've again i've never said it out loud um because i know that's not what it is but my brain always sees it as because of the old um 
not like emoji, but like um, the old school like typed out emojis. Um, I always read it as dong wielder. Do you remember in like the late aughts, early tens, when there was like a fake cult dedicated to the weird messages you'd get in recaptures sometimes? <laughs> I'm glad you get a kick out of me horribly misreading your username. I don't think I ever heard about that. In regards to the to the captchas. I wasn't really in I wasn't really on the internet uh during the aughts. I also don't go on Reddit, so that also would be why I didn't see it. It was like the cult of Inglip, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's uh, part of the internet that I'm not familiar with. <laughs> I think it'd be funny to have a Porygon named Captcha. Or something like that. One time I got a CAPTCHA with a paintbrush looking thing, and it said off the woog. And it- I was like, cool, what should I paint with it? And then it said, Baramu Brave. And that's where that came from, too. Baramu Brave. Trying to remember where you use that. Turing as well. Oh, that's a good one, Commodore Tom. That's the name of my. Oh, right! I forgot that was the name of your art blog. Hey everyone, go follow uh, Oftwoog's art blog. He posts really cool stuff. Go play Ghost Hospital and send him lots of money. Oh! That Rattata had a berry! Okay! And the normal type reducing berry. I've never seen that. I didn't know that was possible on Rattatas. But yeah, Ghost Hospital's good. Play it. Right, Sleepy? You're a ghost type. See, Sleepy agrees. Ghost Hospital. Sleepy approved. So I missed it. Does this run have any house rules? Yes! Okay, I'm glad you asked. Um, I'm trying out a thing now where I go over the rules uh, in the middle of the stream instead of the beginning when there's no one here. Um, let me open up OBS. So, uh, we have our standard Nuzlocke rules um, with the fainting and the one of... Everyone knows those. Um... I am playing with a dupes claws. Uh, I'm not allowed to catch the same line of Pokemon twice. If I encounter the same line again, I instead catch the next thing uh, until it's not a duplicate. Um, no breeding for more Pokemon, that's kind of a given. Um, no trading, but gift and storyline Pokemon are okay to use. I can purchase Pokemon, but that counts as the encounter for that area uh, where it is purchased. And then... The big one is I'm restricting my access to items a lot in this run, so I'm not allowed to buy any items except as noted. I can buy Pokeballs of any kind, I can buy quest items that are necessary to complete the game. Uh, I, because this is a long game with two Elite Fours, I can buy full restores, but ones that I buy can only be used in between Elite Four and Champion battles. 
and that's it, and not during, just in between them. I can only buy each TM up to twice, uh, and, I and again, I can purchase Pokemon, but that counts as the encounter for the area. So I have to rely on items that I find or are gifted to me, uh, and those items will be much more precious. Um, I'm not allowed to look anything up. I have to completely rely on my memory of this game and what information chat decides to help me out with. I'm banning my use of legendaries. Uh, I'm sorry if my connection is bad right now. That's not good. Maybe my mic is too close to my face. Oh, that doesn't have anything to do with my connection. Uh, so yeah, I'm not allowed to look anything up. I have to completely rely on my memory of this game and whatever help you guys decide to give me. I'm banning my use of leg any using of legendaries. Um, along the bottom of the screen, you'll see there are level limits that I've determined for all the gym leaders. I'm not allowed to over-level. Um, and then, uh, in the past few streams, I've mused about whether or not I'll use the berry pot. What I finally settled on is I'm allowed to use the berry pot and get berries on the condition that I can't use berries manually. Um... I can only give them to Pokemon as held items and let them use them themselves. Um, and then the berry pot, I can only harvest from it on stream. That's what I've decided to do regarding that. And obviously no scave scumming. And then um, I'm playing with a slight modification that makes impossible evolutions on cartridge possible. So all the evolutions are possible on cartridge. And that's the rules of the run. Hopefully my connection is leveled out by now. Oh, I just noticed that's what that little light at the bottom of OBS is. Yeah, it's really fluctuating right now. Hold on, let me see if I can fix that. Okay, it looks like it's stabilizing now. It was really bad before. Yeah, I can see... I can see the... That's good to know that I can monitor that. Oh, okay, we're dipping again, but we're gonna press on. Alright. Sleep is level 14. We're gonna put Bubger back up front. Bubger is sniffing at the floor, searching for Bubgers. You can also monitor it in Twitch's channel manager. Hmm. I don't know how to do that. Also, yeah, I, I might have missed it earlier if anyone said anything, but um, I think I got closed captioning installed now? Uh, if anyone could tell me if the captions are or are not working, that would be great. We just go into channel management and it's on the top. Okay. I don't tend to have my browser open while I'm streaming to save on bandwidth. Closed captions. Okay. I see... When I look at the... Because I have the Twitch app open on my phone, I can see the little rectangle, the little square to like turn them on. Stream closed captioner. But I don't know how to turn them on on the mobile version. Oop. And now I've messed up the Twitch app by messing with it. That's fine. Alright, I'll probably have to fiddle with it and figure out what's wrong with it for next time. starter are you picking for Legends? Oh, Legends Arceus? I don't know. Because it's 
Oshawott, Cyndaquil, and... Uh, oh gosh. We talked about this last stream. Oh, Rowlet. I might pick Rowlet, honestly. I feel like out of those three, Rowlet is my favorite. Yeah, Rowlet is the grass one. Gotta love that murder bird. I love the whole, like, Robin Hood thing as it evolves, and it's a ghost type. I might go with Oshawott, big fan of Oshawott. A lot of Oshawott lovers in this stream. Oshawott was the starter I picked when I played through Pokemon Black version. I'm, I want to get another move on Ghastly, but I don't know when Ghastly will learn another move. I don't want to get too close to the level cap, like I've been saying. If they don't, if they don't learn a new move by 16, then I'm just going to give up on the idea of them getting a getting a new move before the gym. <laughs> Big fan of Bubker's new mohawk. I, I've always liked the- and my, my Pokemon tabletop players know this, I've always loved the idea of, like, the middle evolution being a Pokemon's, like, awkward teenage years. I support Bubger and her teenage mohawk. And the Rotatas really have disappeared at this point. Because when we started this stream, it was like nothing but Rotatas. And as the night's gotten as the night's gone on, the percentage of ghastlies we've been running into has only increased. I might lead with Ritari. And then like switch. I think that's the move. Hello, Ritari. Dancing around the pillar! I don't know how you got over there with these gaps in the floor, but... Alright. Let's bring in Bubger. And hope we don't get paralyzed by a lick. Good, good, good. Jolly good. I wonder if the poisonous gas that surrounds a ghastly is, uh, combustible. Probably not, but maybe. I mean, it is a poisonous gas. A lot of, like, the really bad poisonous gases are, like, flammable. But 
but it's not weak to fire type, so maybe, maybe it's not one of those. Who knows? It's a ghost. Made of ick. Oh man, we were struggling to think of names for for our ghastly. We could have named it uh, after a ghost hospital character. I can't believe I didn't think of that. They're they're, they're all um they're all ghost and poison type. The whole ghastly line. Ghosts are pretty cool. Also, welcome to the stream, Porach. It's not too late. We might get more ghosts, another ghost type as the run continues. It's not really up to me, given it's a Nuzlocke, but it's possible. That's awkward. I think we'll be okay though, because Lick has only really been doing about 5 damage to us. I think less actually. Was that one Lick or two that got us to where we are? Let's see, 39 to 38? Wow, that's uh, even less. We'll be okay. And we can't be paralyzed while we're sleeping. So we don't need to worry about our speed being dropped. We just need to wake up. There we go. That is... This might... This might be... Well... On. Special attack... Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's compare. Special attack is 31, or attack is 28. So not a huge gap right now. Um, hmm. I want to go back and heal just in case. Because I want to... Um, ju just because uh, Lick is super effective against Sleepy, I want her to be topped off before I start using her as a switch in. Because that means she'll, has she'll have to take at least one hit for Atari. We're getting close, though, to being ready, because I, I just want to get, I want to get a new move on Ghastly onto Sleepy that can actually hit any of Falconer's Pokémon, because I believe they are all flying and normal typed, um, hopefully before she gets to level 16. I don't know when, again, I don't remember exactly Ghastly's level upset in this game. Uh, and then I want to get Ritari and Peach at least to level 10 each as backup. Because they can maybe clean things up with quick attack. And then Stratus is already at level 10 in case he needs to clean up a fight with Quick Attack. So we're almost to that goal. I just need Sleepy to hopefully learn something in the next couple levels that isn't Ghost-typed. Pretty please. Or at least Nightshade, because Nightshade does fixed damage, so I think it still works on normal types, right? If it ends up being Nightshade, we can test it out on a Rattata first, before we try it in a gym battle. Welcome back! 
Speaking of long, guess what happened to Bubger? Look at her! She's a teenager now! She has a mohawk! So proud of her. Long Bubger. It's true! Like a club sandwich. Or a sub. It's a longer Bubger. Oof. At least it didn't paralyze. I have real-life food bubger right now. I had a real-life bubger right before this stream started, actually. So I was getting... ready. It might be worth running back just to heal up Sleepy. Yeah, I don't wanna... I don't wanna risk it. Just in case. I don't wanna end up in a... Because in theory, we could switch her in, she gets crit licked and paralyzed, and then either we stay in and get crit a second time and she faints, or we try to run and it doesn't work and she gets crit and faints, and those are both scenarios that I want to avoid. So I think I think we play it safe. Since we have to use her as a switch in, we have to be a bit safer. Oh right! So I went to Nameless Burger Establishment. And I ordered two burgers, one for myself and one for a family member. Uh but then I'm driving home and I realize that they have given me three burgers. Uh and it, tur it turned out to just be, like, a plain, like, regular burger. So, nothing that exciting. But hey, for free burger, I'll take it. I think Rotari can take this one himself. I hope. Let's see if Rotari's defenses have improved enough. Well, we won't get to find out, because it tail whipped. But you know what? I'm not gonna look a gift rat in the mouth. Nameless Burger Establishment until we get that sponsorship, am I right, ladies? Yeah! You're not getting plugs from me until I get paid. Not hypnotize me. You will be blepped. You have been blepped, points. You missed it earlier, Lark. I was lamenting that um, we didn't think to name are ghastly after a ghost hospital character. There's still time. Something about ghastly Oh, we didn't what we didn't oko that one. But we did paralyze. Oh heck yeah. Ideal scenario. I mean, ideal would have been okoing, but this is just as good. 
Sleepy is still a good name. But Lev does... Uh... Ah, heck. Uh... Levitate doesn't... It does have Levitate. I don't- I don't even have any ground-type moves yet, I don't know why I'm worrying about Levitate. Sorry, I'm just thinking about future team... I mean, as much as I can think about future team, it is a Nuzlocke. Let's get Sleepy in there. Something about Ghastly's back sprite. The- the way the- the gas cloud is rendered just makes me think of like a very poorly kept afro something about the shape of it i don't know because this this the 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 front sprite looks more convincingly like like wispy particles i think it's because they dithered the back sprite so much like it looks more like a like a bad haircut Because the, the other one doesn't dither out at the edges. I feel like having the solid lines a bit more would have looked better. This should be easy. Yes! Ritari grows more powerful. Level 10? He did it. Whew. Our special defenses. Oh my god, our defense is only 11! That explains so much. Because Peach is already at like 15, I think? Oh, yes! Yes! Now Ritari can can solo ghastlies. Uh, let's get rid of tackle, because we don't need it now that we have quick attack. And it can miss. Heck yeah. Ritari just became way more useful. And Bite has a uh, flinch chance, which is always good, because Turns where the enemy doesn't get to do anything are always great. At least in a video game. Biting a jumping kill. <laughs> it's true. It's what Chewie would have wanted. Peach will also become long when she evolves. In fact, she will become the long Pokémon. <laughs> yes, continue to miss me with hypnosis. Oko? Oko! Come to think of it, could I get anything to wrap myself around that 9 foot real life fair plush? Yeah, that would be great. I I, I kind of, uh, I really like the the giant Lapras one, because you can just use it as a chair, because the, the neck can give you back support. Um, and then the Snorlax bed will never not be funny. I don't know why I pronounced Snorlax weird then. I'm starting to think that maybe I should have been grinding Peach and Ritari out on the routes instead of in here. Because unlike Bubger and Sleepy, they don't really get much out of these special attack EVs that I think the Ghastlies are giving me. But, oh well. It's only so much we can do in a Nuzlocke. 
No! Finally happened! That bad long snake girl anime pillow, but it's for a long snake girl. Oh, I had to think about that for a second. I don't I didn't remember what it was you were referring to for a long time there, Lark. Sleepy woke up. It's more likely than you think. Now she's gonna be extra cranky. Let's even maybe do that. Let's let's get some variety in our EVs for Might be a bad idea because there are Weedles out here. Um, but I think we'll be okay. If anything, Bubger and uh, Bubger and Sleepy have enough HP where I should be able to walk them back to the Pokemon Center if they get poisoned without it being an issue, as long as I stay close to the doorway. Oh, it's our first Hoot Hoot. I think. Have we encountered a Hoot Hoot before in this run? I really wish Pokemon merch didn't automatically go at least triple price or whatever once it's out of stock. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of things, though. Once it's gone, it's gone. And the internet is just like, you will pay for this. Literally. Oh, so close. So close to that ding. It's gonna be water drinking sounds. Stay hydrated, everybody. Twenty-one to seventeen, that's four damage. Seventeen to eight, oh that's a crit. Okay, we are in crit range, but we also leveled. So we can keep going, I'm just gonna bring Peach back out of the front. Ditto Bulbasaur and ditto for it. Let's... I still need to get that last move on Sleepy, but we can go back to the tower for that. We're nearly there. We've got Ritari and Peach where I want them. Now we just gotta hope that... Sleepy learns a new move in either the next level or in Ditto Trubbish. Yeah, either this, either, either the next level or the level after. And if she if she doesn't know a new move by then, then I guess she's just gonna be a hypnosis machine. Does Nightshade work on? Normal types, since it's fixed damage. I ho I don't know if the next move is Nightshade or not, but I think it is. Sleepy's dancing around the pillar. Another ghastly. Give me 
those special attack EVs. Give them to me. So that my Shadow Balls will be very strong when I eventually learn Shadow Ball. Like, this is going faster because we can one-hit KO things, but it's also going slower because we need more experience to ding now. <laughs> Thinking it basically just evens out. Real-time Pokemon day-night cycle, or a push to do an artificial cycle. Hmm. I feel. Hmm. I feel like there's a compelling argument for both, but I feel like it'd be most accessible to do an artificial day-night cycle. Yeah, I, I think I think I'd want an artificial day night cycle, cause like, if you, cause mo a lot of people, especially like older people, like 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 people who aren't, like if you're not a little kid, uh, then you're you'll be playing the game at probably the same time every day, and in a game like Pokemon where the time of day can change things, um. I think it'd be a lot more accessible if there was an artificial day-night cycle, so that, like, even if you're, you know, trying to fit this game into your schedule, just in life, like, parts of the game are still accessible to you even if you're playing it, so without having to, like, go into your console settings and change the time, and then your, your DS gets mad at you and it makes all your berries die and locks you out of all the daily stuff for a while. So, put me down for artificial day-night cycle. IMO. Think would be better. I mean, it, it, it is kind of novel to have, you know, the game be the same time it is in real life. You know, just for your immersion or whatever. So that you feel like you're on this adventure with Pokemon, which is always, like, kind of what these games are going for. Um... But I feel like the accessibility of an artificial day-night cycle, like, is more important than that. Yeah. Let. I think we're gonna ding from this. If not this one, then the next one. Yes! Okay. New move? New move? Oh, look at that special attack stat go up, yeah! Okay, it is Nightshade. Um... What do we forget here? Um... It's between Spite and Mean Look. Neither of them are super useful in a Nuzlocke. Spite could be useful if we have to PowerPoint stall to make it go faster. Um, I might replace Mean Look because the AI doesn't usually switch. Well, actually, does anyone in chat know, does Mean Look prevent Abra from teleporting away? Or does teleport circumvent mean look? Yeah, yeah. I I'm, I'm thinking um, Haunter or, or uh, Gengar is going to end up being a special attacker, because Shadow Ball, you know? Shadow Ball is probably going to be my main, my main stab move. And if they become a core part of the team, maybe like Thunderbolt. Another good special move. But yeah, does anyone know... 
if Mean Look can trap Abra and prevent it from teleporting, because that alone might make worth, might make keeping Mean Look worth it. Do you like how you can look at your stats during move things in older games? Yeah! Do they not let you do that anymore? Does the Sword and Shield not let you look at that? But yeah, I'll wait just a bit longer to see if chat's gonna help me out with this. But, uh... Oh, new, new games? But yeah. If not, then I'll just have to think of it my decide blindly um but yeah does anyone does anyone know if mean look prevents abra from teleporting away i think it does so maybe it's better to get rid of spite I'm gonna get rid of Spite, and and hope Gen 3 and 4 it doesn't. As in doesn't stop Abra from teleporting away? Is that is that what you're saying? Then maybe I should get rid of Mean Look then. If it doesn't even stop Abra. Gen 2 it traps, but beyond Gen 2 it doesn't trap. Well, it traps them, but does it trap it does it does it stop teleport specifically? Because I know it prevents them from fleeing and it prevents them from switching. I know it does that for sure, but does it stop the move teleport from working? Might be worth getting rid of it anyway. Alright, yeah, we'll 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 get rid of mean look if it doesn't work on teleport past gen 2. Ah, okay. Yeah. Forgot mean look. Or nightshade. Alright. Alright. That's that's us ready, I think. Let let's test out um Let's try to find a Rattata and test out if Nightshade... Because Nightshade does fixed damage. Um, so it might work on normal types, even though they're immune, since it's a fixed damage amount. But I want to test it before I try it in a gym battle and find out in a bad way. Ah, well, too late. Can escape, but not switch out. I feel like that implies that they can teleport. Oh, we found a Rattata. I didn't need to switch at all. All right, send in the ghost. Let's see if this works. Effect. All right, let's do a science experiment. Doesn't have, okay. So even though it's fixed damage, it still doesn't work on normal types. That's fine. We know in advance. So yeah, Sleepy, Sleepy just isn't gonna be able to do anything to um, Falcon's Pokemon beyond put them to sleep, which will still be useful. Um, 
It is unfortunate, though. <sighs> that might mean we need to level up Peach and Rotari a bit more, since we'll have to rely on them more in that case. But I think we're going to be wrapping up here soon. speed tie that Rattata? That was a fast Rattata. Okay. Um... We'll just get Rattari and Peach both to 11 and we'll call it... We'll call it... And we'll call it ready for Falconer and we'll take on Falconer next time. That'll be good. I think that's the move. Yes, I would like to rest my Poketman. And I want to get them not special attack EVs, so we'll take them back out to Route 31. And just hope we don't get poisoned. I still have no idea what effort value Bellsprout yields, but I don't think it's special attack. So it's still better than training in the tower for Ritari and- Oh, crit! Nice job, Ritari! Um... Yeah, still better than training in the tower in terms of Rotari and uh, Peach. Special attack EVs don't do much for them. I wonder if Bellsprout gives attack EVs. A lot of Pokemon games have this problem where the early game is all physical attack and speed EVs when it comes to the wilds you encounter. And it was especially a problem in black and white when it came to EV training. Because at least, I don't know about black 2 and white 2, but in black and white, the first ones, it was actually really hard to EV train for special attack EVs, like, consistently and reliably. Because, um, there was only one place in the whole game to do it. Uh, and it was a very, like, it, it, it was, like, halfway through the game, about, maybe a bit earlier, uh, and it was against Flitwick, which had flame bodies, so you'd get burned all the time. So, like, especially if you're nuzlocking, but even then, um, even if you're not, like, it's just incredibly inconvenient to EV train for special attack in black and white versions specifically. I do miss, uh, super training from Oras. Because, like, the thing about EV training 
it doesn't, like... Like, it's a layer of the game that's rewarding to learn, you know? Because, like, it, it's, it is, like, rewarding mastery of the game to be like, oh, there's this system that, like, lets you more specifically... This is the second time I've found a Rattata with a Chillin' Berry. I've never seen that happen before today, I swear. What was I talking about? Um, right, okay, so... I, I, I personally like games that reward players for taking the time to, like, learn advanced mechanics and, like, reward mastery, essentially, which not everyone does, I, I acknowledge, but I'm one of those people who, who likes games that do that. Um, and, and Pokemon is a good example of a franchise that, like, rewards mastery without it being necessary, because you can... You can absolutely fully enjoy Pokemon without ever bothering to care about effort values. But if you do, um, you know, especially in the competitive scene, like, it's it's very rewarding to do so if you take the time to learn and, and apply it and, like, strategize that way. Um, Houndstever, it's generally, in most games, something that's very uh it's very obtuse in that there there's no way for you to like really check how many effort values a pokemon has most of the time exactly um some games have like graphs now that'll give you a vague idea um but only oras like really like allowed you to count out uh, effort values and get them not easily, but more easily than having to, like, grind out by a by attacking specific Pokemon. Because super training, like, was a much more accessible way of doing that, and I feel like that only made the game better, right? Because it's still rewarding mastery the exact same way, um but making it more accessible, which I feel like is only a positive, and I wish they would bring it back for that reason. Because now, you know, without it, EV training has gone back to being this, like, extra obtuse thing that's, like, unwieldy to do. I, I, I'm having flashbacks now to, um, on my DS, I had post-it notes on either side of the, uh, upper screen, um, with, like, tally marks, uh, just for keeping track of effort values when I was EV training back in, uh, back in, uh, well, playing this game actually, Soul Silver. Um, and like, you shouldn't have to do that, right? But, like, it's good to, re to reward mastery and all that, but I feel like EV training needs to be more accessible and less obtuse for it to be player-friendly. And Auras, like, was the closest we've had to that because of super training. I really wish they would bring that back. That, like, competitive Pokémon in general... And, and not just Pokémon, like, competitive video games in general um, have an accessibility issue, and I would like to see a lot of those gaps made easier for people to access. There's not enough time in this stream for me to go into my whole rant about esports and accessibility, but maybe next stream, during or after fighting Falconer, if anyone wants to poke me and remind me to do that if anyone cares about this kind of stuff. Yeah, we're gonna get Peach to 11, and then we're ready for Falconer, we're gonna call it there. Especially since it looks like my connection is starting to fluctuate again.
23 to 20, that's 3, 6 on a crit, we'll be fine for a few more encounters. trying to like bring myself down because now I'm thinking about esports again and I'm just like Ugh, there are problems that need solved I think who who gives Either HP or special defense EVs. I think. Should be good for Peach. Peach beans. It's true! You can see her two pink little toe beans! Look at those beans! I have to do about four more of those. I'm gonna go ahead and heal up then. I have not saved at any point during this almost two and a half hour stream, so let's do that just in case. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm gonna try to figure out why closed captions aren't working um, before the next stream as well. I thought I followed the instructions, but I probably missed a step or something. Are you on mobile or on a uh, desktop? Uh. Oft Woog, wielder of the Oft Woogs. I'd like to thank the people who made all the overworld Pokemon follow sprites and those people alone. Truly doing the Lord's work. Two or three more, and we'll be there. Again! With the chillin' berry! Maybe it's just because I didn't use so many normal type moves against Rattatas when I played this game back in the day, but I don't remember there being so many Rattatas holding Chillin' Berries, and it's only been this stream too. Like, we've fought plenty of Rattatas before this stream. It's not a time of day thing, I don't think. Like, we've just been... I don't think lucky is the right word, but like... It's such a crazy coincidence. Alright. So... We're gonna call it here. We've got, we've got my Pokémon to a level that I'm happy with. Next time, we're gonna take on Falconer. Whew. I think, I think we're gonna be okay. Bubger evolved. Sleepy and Bubger are level 15. It's a little unfortunate that Sleepy isn't able to actually damage any of Falconer's Pokemon. 
I know he has a Pidgeotto. I'm trying to remember what the other one is. The Completionist? Sure, I'll raid the Completionist. Um... Right. I think we'll be okay. Bubger's stats just got quite a bit better because she evolved. Sleepy can't be hit by normal type moves, which is good. I just have to worry about, like, Gust. And Peck. And Sand Attack. Or, I don't know if Sand Attack can hit me since I have Levitate. To all ground type moves, yeah. Um... We have these three. Uh, maybe I should get Stratus to 11, but we can do that next time. I think we're gonna call it here, guys. Get your arcade machine. Yeah, I don't really know... I don't think anyone I know is streaming right now. Um, Mage, I'm pretty sure, is done for the day. Off, Oft Woog Wielder is hosting, so they're not streaming. So I think we're just gonna end the stream. All right. Have a great night, everybody. I hope we had a great week while I was taking a week off. I'm glad to be back at this. Pretty chill stream today. I'm sorry, not a whole lot happened, but like I like I said of when I was posting on the socials and all that, it was probably just going to be a chill stream today while we grinded, ground, whatever the past tense is. But yeah, next time I'll be more awake for sure. Uh, and we're gonna take on Falconer. Ooh. Right. Bye, everybody.